When I first heard about AI was in the year 2020. Now at the time, I wasn't even working as a software engineer. I wasn't even back in school studying computer science. It was, you know, it was actually right before COVID. And I remember that that's when I first heard about AI because I was listening to an audiobook that I had picked because at the time I was just working, you know, at this company cleaning pools for people. And, you know, I had a lot of spare time because cleaning a pool, it's not a very, you know, proactive job you have to be doing. And just out of curiosity, I found a free audiobook on artificial intelligence on Audible. And I thought, hey, you know, I have some hours to kill, so I'm going to listen to it. Again, mind you, at the time, looking back, that was one of the reasons why I decided to go back to school at the age of 28. Just because, you know, tech industry seemed cool, artificial intelligence seemed like they were going to do something with it. And, you know, I just wanted to go back to school and get my degree, right? Um, I did not expect for AI to blow up the way it did in the year 2022. Um, even while I was in school studying at the time, I was, I think I was wrapping up my senior year. But now that we're here, you know, almost you know, over a year later, ChatGPT is out all these other tools. The one you're looking at right now is called Claude. And now you're in the spot yourself where maybe for whatever reason, maybe you just graduated high school, maybe you're trying to go back to school and all these things are changing so fast with AI. And you're wondering to yourself, you know, is it even worth it to start now? Am I too late for that? I mean, if I did want to start, how do you even go about that? That's what we're going to discuss that today. And the answer is yes and no. And the reason why I say that is because AI in and of itself is a new way to learn. Now, if the invention of the smartphone is the equivalent of having the Library of Alexandria at your hand, then I would say using AI or particularly applications like ChatGPT or Claude, that's the equivalent of having a tutor on your phone 24 seven, always available, that's willing to explain concepts to you, that's willing to teach you at any given moment without the loss of time, without a high cost, and just with absolute and basically unlimited patience, right? And the reason why I emphasize that is because Yes, you should learn AI in 2024. In fact, not only should you learn it, you should start implementing tools that are relevant to, you know, the, all these ongoing changes and become somebody not and become somebody that's not just, you know, a learner of AI, but a practitioner of the current tools that are coming out. Because if you try and go in and get a degree and wait until after to start applying it, you're going to be way out of date on all the things that you could do that you could have learned. And on top of that, as you become somebody that learns how to use these tools, you also increase your value in the sense that you're going to be more readily able to teach others how to use them. Because at the end of the day, the reason why people are so afraid of AI taking over is because there's that sense of, you know, falling behind in the technology because the technology can seem daunting it seems scary but if you're somebody that you embrace this you learn how to use these tools then you can provide value to the people around you your community small businesses and showing them how to apply these tools for their benefit rather than letting them become just overwhelmed by all the negative outlooks that are being predicted for AI tools. Right now, we're going to ask straight from the source what they think about AI in 2024. So after we ask that, we get this very elaborate response on the reasons why this field might be worth studying. So here's what I think is the most relevant part of this response is this last point gives us where it says it's a rapidly evolving field. AI, the AI field is progressing incredibly quickly with new breakthroughs and techniques emerging all the time. Studying AI means you'll always be learning and working on cutting edge technology. So I think it's definitely the good thing and the bad thing. If you want to work on a field where you know, you're going to be right, you're going to be working with the newest thing that's coming up, AI is going to be perfect. But also because of the level of competition that's going to be going on, you might get to a point where if you focus on the round, if you focus on the wrong thing, you might end up falling behind. So that's what I think the challenge is when it comes to deciding whether you should learn AI. It's not if you should learn, it's how you should go about it. Some people are thinking of going back to school just for AI. Some people just want to take a boot camp. Some people just want to take free courses. So I think we can follow up with that as the next question on here. So here I'm going to ask it, hey, how do I learn as fast as possible without focusing on the wrong thing for too long and missing out on all the breakthroughs? So I love this response that we got. Basically, it's telling us that we need to focus on companies that are at the cutting edge. Basically, companies like Google, OpenAI that are doing the most advanced AI stuff right now. It mentions how we should work, focus on conferences and workshops, right? That's where all the people that are going to gather that are working on all of these AI problems. It says to engage with the community. Again, if you want to learn about AI, you want to do it with people that are working on it, whether it's people are doing it as a hobby or something like that. If you're surrounded by those people, of course, you're going to be able to keep up with the latest breakthroughs since that's all they're going to talk about. 
says prioritize hands-on learning so do these projects yourselves it doesn't matter if it's through tutorials or through github repositories if you find a way to walk yourself through some of these projects you're gonna grow your skill level and then i like that it emphasizes it says take online courses judiciously and it says like while well, online courses can be helpful then you might run into some that are outdated so I think this goes back to the original part where it says focus on the companies that are already working in the car on in the cutting edge technology. And this part I love it says focus your learning. AI, AI is a huge field, so it's important to focus your learning on the areas most relevant to your interests and goals. Going deep on techniques you're most excited about will serve you better than shallow learning about every new development. So it's emphasizing that you should find the thing about AI you're interested in, the industry you want to go into, and kind of zero in on that. And think of it this way, AI is pretty much a buzzword at this point. But instead of thinking about it in terms of, I want to learn AI, replace the word AI with the word tools, right? And by tools, I just mean tools in a toolbox. It would seem very vague if you said something like, I want to learn about tools. That wouldn't really make sense because, you know, tools can be used for a lot of things. Tools can be used to build houses. Tools can be used to fix cars. Tools can be used for, you know, plumbers, woodwork, all these. There's all these things you can do with power tools, right? So it wouldn't make sense for you to take a mechanics course if at the end of the day you want to learn how to use these tools to become, you know, the next fixer upper professional, right? You might use some of the same tools. You might, there might be some overlap on the use cases as well. But you wouldn't benefit from learning a completely different discipline just because it involves the same tools. It's the same thing with AI. I think a lot of people get caught up in just learning AI or just knowing more about AI. And maybe they'll start with a very basic, very, you know, way back, not old, but, you know, a very foundational approach. They'll start with maybe linear algebra, maybe machine learning. And those principles, those core, you know, disciplines are important. But you don't want to wait to a point to you learn all that to start using these tools because by the end of next month, there's going to be a whole new set of companies working on a whole new set of problems. And if you're still learning, you know, about vectors at the time, you're going to be way behind. So like I say, I do like that this response focuses on basically overall staying up to date with the current things that are going on in the field right now. Because again, it is very competitive and it is evolving very quickly. So I think we're ready to ask it. The very hard hitting question is, should I get a college degree in this? All right, so we got a response back and I'm really loving what it's saying. It's saying, pursuing a college degree in AI or related field like computer science or data science can be a great way to build a strong foundation, but it's not the only path to a, to a successful career in AI. Here's a list of pros and cons to consider. So when we look at the pros, we see that in a college degree, we'd get structured learning. I think that's great. You get a curriculum, you get classes that you know you're going to take into. So everything built on top of each other. And because this is a you know, very systemic approach, it's, you know, you kind of have the accountability too of that you wouldn't otherwise have if you didn't pay for classes and you had to just self-study. And like it says here, you also have hands-on projects. But I think whether it's a college class or an online course, that's gonna vary what kind of projects you do and how much hands-on experience you get. Networking, I do think that if you go to college, you do have access to a series of peers that let you collaborate more you know, with more relevant things that you're doing. And also you kind of get the benefit of job fairs and things like that. Research opportunities is going to be something that if you really love the thing you're studying, you're going to have more opportunities to find research positions, maybe even like independent research as an undergrad. And that could be a gateway to becoming, you know, getting a master's in that particular thing you're studying. And there's also the credibility aspect of it, right? At the end of the day, a lot of companies want people with degrees, right? It's not that getting a degree in that's focused on AI would be a bad thing. I think the main con, for, in my opinion, would be how delayed or how much things would change from the time you start your degree to the time you finish. So now we look at the cons, right? So time and cost. Again, college is expensive. I know personally I had to take out loans to go back. And there's also the commitment that you have to make. And it's make or break, right? If you, It doesn't matter if you're 98% done with your degree. If you don't finish it, then, you know, you get nothing out of it. Here you talk about curriculum lag and I think that's one of the main concerns with this field because it's changing so fast and the reason it is changing so fast is because it's so popular but at the same time right you might risk you might risk not only that you're learning things that are outdated by the time you start taking the class you're also learning at a somewhat slower pace and again that's going to be detrimental to you if you're trying to keep up with the industry.
here we also see opportunity cost, right? So when you could have otherwise been working, building up your portfolio, creating projects and learning about on your own at possibly at a faster pace, maybe not just alone, but contributing with other communities, you know, you kind of miss out on that because you have to focus on the projects you have to do, on the assignments you have and on the classes you have to finish. The other con is that it's not mandatory, right? So I think this goes hand in hand with the pro of getting a degree, right? That it provides a lot of structure. So by the end of it, you have a very, you know, you're able to more, you're able to better articulate that you know what it is you're talking about for like job interviews, you have your portfolio, you have a resume. Now you could do that potentially on your own. And again, what's gonna matter at the end of the day is that you can show your employer that you know the things you're talking about through the projects you've made, through the things you've created on your own and things you've studied and that you can convey that information concisely and clearly to the interviewer. But again, that's kind of like both a pro and a con, right? Like in school, you have all that nice structure from all the classes you take and on your own, or you kind of have to build that for yourself, right? And we go back to the rapid change aspect, right? That what you learn in a multi-year degree, right? Might become outdated either even before you even start the class, but more than likely in something like AI, it will be outdated by the time you finish the class. I remember at the point when I took my first artificial intelligence class, ChatGPT hadn't even come out, so it was very shocking that it came right after and just to see how it just took the world by a storm. So there it is, guys. It's not, I don't think at the end of the day it's a question of whether you should study AI in 2024 or not. Really, the answer is if you do want to go into it, you need to start moving now and you need to start moving fast because, again, it's changing. We can't emphasize that enough. A year ago, you know, two years ago, people hadn't even heard of this technology. Now everybody is working to implement those tools into, you know, all of their digital products, into their companies, into their businesses. So if you think that's interesting, if you think that's, you know, you want to be a part of the next big thing, even just by learning about it, then it'd be beneficial to start learning about it now. If you do decide you want to go back to school, I say go for it, but it's not going to change the fact that you're going to have to keep up with modern changes, changing technologies on your own and build up your portfolio that way. If you do decide to go, you know, a self-taught route, it's going to be the most beneficial to you to keep up with the top companies, the changes they're making, learning how to use their technologies, and most of all, joining a community where you can build projects with and help each other out to understand all these changes, right? If you have any questions, if you're still, you know, considering joining the tech industry, studying AI, join my Discord, send me a message. I'd be more than happy to have a one-on-one -on -one with you. I know for me, when I started, I went back to Square 28. This was before AI even came out or before ChatGPT came out. But even then, you know, I know I had a lot of doubts. I know I didn't know if I could make it in tech. I had all these, you know, just all these doubts. And I wish I had reached out to someone to kind of be able to get a little more, a little more insight on what the industry was like. So I think in this way, I'm more than happy now to be able to answer any questions about my day to day, what my job is like, the experience I had to get to get a job, to graduate and all that good stuff. So again, links can be in the description. Thank you so much for watching. And again, the reason why I did this with Claude AI or just basically asked in front of you is because if you haven't even at least started using one of these tools like ChatGPT, you need to start using them. You need to implement them. You need to implement them in your day-to-day -day life. You know, ask them questions, learn things, be curious, and just just so that you can see how amazing this technology is. Thank you again, and I'll see you in the next one.